my friend and my neighbor Josh came over again and today he brought me persimmons. These are wild persimmons. I believe they are zone four to seven. So you can see in my hand, they're quite small. It's interesting around here because these have a short shelf life because they're wild, because I guess people are more familiar with domesticated persimmons. These are $15 a pound, so I bought three pounds. And the thing is they have approximately two seeds in each. There's, I mentioned two types of kagi, and there's this one, and then there's the one that looks like the Roma tomato. And so it would be this shape. And this one gets, that's this shape, gets really, really soft quite quickly. This one takes a while to get soft. This is the one that my aunt and uncle in Durham, California, they grow these on their property, much larger ones, domestic ones, and they slice them and dehydrate them and they make a beautiful snack. But these are quite astringent. If I was to, in spite of the fact that this one side is soft, all of this is not. This is more just like a bruise than it is ripe. If I was to bite into this, it would be like biting into sour cotton almost. It leaves that sticky taste in your mouth. Your tongue feels like it has fur on it or hair, not hair, but fur. And it just makes your mouth pucker up. So these take quite a while to uh, actually ripen. And that's why I have them on this box. I'm just going to leave them in the back room. And as they get very soft, then I will, these leaves will just pop right off. In fact, they just with a bare touch like that, they would pop off. Once that is the case and they're nice and soft, then we'll simply eat the fruit. And I will take the seeds and put them into a bag of moist hummus soil in my fridge, which I've already marked. And I will stratify those over the winter months in the fridge and plant them in the spring. And I'm, the plan is that I will at least get, out of all these seeds, at least two or three viable seeds that will produce trees for me. Because in spite of the fact that these are small, they're still incredibly delicious when they're ripe. It is Sunday, October 17, and 10 to 1. And Gypsy finagled me to come outside. I'm really glad she did. It's beautiful out here. Don't know how many more gorgeous days like this we'll get. Hello, Buffy. Buffy, of course, is always out here. She's kind of living in my car these days. But uh, Gypsy hasn't been out for a few days because it's been cold and wet and uh, it's nice to see them out and it's actually nice to be out. So this one, unfortunately, the other day smashed her face into the stairs in the building and broke her bottom left tooth. So she no longer has a bottom right tooth or a bottom left tooth. She's okay though. She's eating and she's not in a lot of pain. So it's uh she's all right and other sad news is that three days ago Dom's dad had a stroke we found out that he's diabetic he has high cholesterol high blood pressure maybe not doing as well as everybody thought he was so a bit of a strain there nice to be out here. I think I'm going to, while I'm out here, take advantage of this to look for some hot peppers. Nothing there. This off plant is in full bloom. Almost. Blooming anyway. You can see how large it's gotten. And so has the catnip. That's all catnip there. So between the piss off plant, the catnip, and the globe artichokes, this garden, this portion of the garden is full. I staked, hmm, I did stake this. 
but it would appear the steak is missing. It's gone. Oh no, I staked this one. Oh, so that means I gotta stake this one now too. Okay. The other day I came in here and laid tarp on the ground, put a layer of straw over top, put the straw on that back wall, put all of my grow pots there, opened up that entire shelf for seedlings to go along there and, and reconfigured all my hanging stuff, even using the brace boards to store stuff buckets those are all buckets for water those are all five gallon buckets with holes in the bottom for planting and grow baskets or you'll know them as bushel baskets so this room is completely organized for winter and today honestly it's starting to feel like winter or at least fall definite fall weather so those plants those hibiscus will have to come in probably this week. Oh, we have a beautiful maple leaf here. Squirrels are digging. I only have three oak trees left. And, oh, hello, little bird. Sorry. Uh, not too bad here. Everything looks okay. I will have to get out here. Oh, I have a couple tomatoes ripe. I'm going to have to get out here and harvest the girls in about a week's time. They look like they're almost ready. Uh, I don't see any peppers. I have lots of peppers, but there's just nothing's ready yet. So other than put the fruit trees away and harvest the girls, all that's left to do is cut back the globe artichoke to about 12 inches, cover it with a box and mulch it really heavy. I'm even going to cut the piss off plant way back and mulch it really heavy just to see if this will be the first time I do that this year, just to see if that will continue to live. I don't think it will, which is why I took lots of cuttings. My Jerusalem artichokes still have not flowered. If they haven't flowered by the end of the first frost, I'll just go ahead and dig up all the roots, the bulbs. And then I have to take off the red scarlet runner bean. I let it die back and then take all the beans and compost that and take the vine off the arbor. Oh, and I gotta bring that plant in before the winter. And of course I have to empty the rain barrels and I will mulch the strawberries very heavy. Beyond that, I think I've done everything I need to do. And Dom will take care of things like putting away the all of the uh, hoses. In the meantime, I think I'm going to take advantage of this beautiful weather. It's perfect for walking. 